whenever I start writing something, I have a file on my computer that is, when I make a rule or I make a statement that becomes something like this is important, it goes in there so that I always have access to it and I always remember it. Um, when I started doing my uh, Paranormal SWAT Team series, uh, one of the very first things, that, that started from me wanting to tell a horror story about a SWAT team that was competent in a supernatural world. Because if you watch slasher movies, sooner or later some, there will be a slasher movie where they send the police in. They will call in the SWAT team and they're like, go get them. And the SWAT team will show up and die horribly fighting Jason Voorhees because they're not equipped for it. And I thought, wouldn't it be neat to have a story where the SWAT team shows up to handle Jason Voorhees, but they actually can. Like, these are guys who've actually trained for it and are ready for it. So when I sat down to do that, I started keeping notes. Like, this is how their armor works. This is how, this is what this guy's position on the squad is. These are the things he does. This is what he does. This is how he functions. For me, the world building started as, how do you do this thing, and then how do you do something else? Um, I don't, I, I, for the language in that one, I use language in that one because I wanted to make sure I was accurate. Uh, I talk to people who do use, who know firearms better than I do to find out, all right, am I using this statement correctly? Because for the longest time I was saying like, and he loads a clip into the gun. They don't load clips, they load magazines. I didn't know that. I had to be told that. Uh, I had to learn that, uh, uh, the, the different things that they that the SWAT team says to one another, they say very specific things in very specific instances. I had to learn what those are um, because I wanted them to be accurate. You know, I wanted to know, like, you know, like on television sometimes you'll see they'll have a SWAT thing and they'll have one guy standing behind another guy with his hand on his back, and sometimes they won't. I'm like, why do you do that? They said, well, in real life, why they do that is because the guy in front of them wants to know there's a guy behind him. And if they're not saying anything, the guy behind him lets the guy in front of him know he saw something by doing this. By like just tapping him on the back to go, thumbs up, and I can't say it because I don't want to make any noise. So that's why they do that. And that becomes, that for me became why I did that. That, that those are the things I put into the story for that reason. I was very careful on how I built the world around me. And so you keep a Bible that you refer to as you write with all of the little... Right. Yeah, um, I, I have the introduction. All of my characters are introduced the same way in every story because I've actually cut and pasted it into the Bible. Uh -huh. So whenever I introduce Dr. Adam Stein, or, or the Rabbi Adam Stein, heavy weapons expert, or heavy weapons operator and expert in religion, I don't even know what it is because I don't write it. I just copy it and put it into the next story. Because every time he's introduced, it's the same two sentences. Which for me is funny. I don't know if anybody else will think so, <laughs> but it's, it's, always, it's always that, uh -huh. you know, that's what it is. I, I have stuff in there that I've never put in the books, like I know what the characters look like. Uh, I have a character named Blake Laguna, who I have never described out of armor, and I have had people tell me they know exactly what Blake looks like, which is interesting because I've never described him out of armor. <laughs> But I have written down what he looks like. I have the description in my Bible. I just have never right. had a story where he's not in armor and he's not right. in his full tactical armor. I, don't, I, I just finished like 75,000 words. And, uh, Congratulations. Thank you. Set in 1965. And so I did a lot of reading and I did a lot of interviewing people, but um, I haven't, I didn't take detailed notes. And so that's what I need to do maybe is go back and uh, like with everything I read, so that when that stuff comes up to make sure that it's accurate, I need to go through each one and make sure that everyone's authentic. No, I also, you know, part of the other reason I did what I did, yeah. part of the reason I did the Bible is I do genre fiction. I'm very much doing supernatural fiction. Yeah. Genre fiction, supernatural science fiction. And fantasy. If you get if you get lucky enough to have a series, um, you can believe the people who read your books will notice if you screw something up from one book to another. Right. There are people in this world who watch Star Trek the original series, not in the order the episodes aired, but in the order of the star dates at the front of every episode. Because at the beginning of every episode, it's Kurt going it's Starship Enterprise Captain's Log star date. There are people who watch those in the order of the start. And they talk in Trekkie language, and I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, exactly.
Exactly. Um, so those are those are things that, that I, I pay a little bit more attention to that because of that. Um, George R. R. Martin directs Game of Thrones. Actually, about I don't remember what point he said it was. It was like his second or third book. I think it's his third book. People had started pointing out things to him that he was getting wrong. And it got so bad that he found a guy online who was answering questions in forums about the books, about things that Martin couldn't remember, and he hired that guy as the official historian of Westeros. That's that guy's job now. And, and Martin said that literally, if he has a question about something, he emails that guy to find out how it works in his own stories. Uh. Well, do you ever want like, my big question was J.K. Rowling, because, like, I think the perfect example is in the very first Harry Potter book, he's watched by the crazy lady, you know, as the cats and all that. Well, then in, like, the fifth book, she comes back, and she was put there by Dumbledore as someone to protect Harry. Like, so do you, like, fill your books with a ton of characters and then... Like, do you think J.K. Rowling thought from the beginning, I'm going to make her important, you know, five books from now, or do you just fill it with characters and then go back and say, you know what, I can use her now in a different role? Because I just, I, I can't imagine she could think of all those characters and what their future roles could, uh, I mean, maybe she did, she I don't have, know. The, the only thing that makes me think she did is the amount of description she gives to that woman. In the first yeah. book, there is yeah. a lot of description about that woman. There's there like almost a chapter of Harry spending a day at her house with her cats. That's true. But I mean, and there's <laughs> other examples too. But it, I just think it's fascinating. Like, do you put in like you know just in case characters? Or, I, don't I, I, know. I give you this one just because this is, I think we'll finish the lecture on this just because this will this is this is world building in a way that like I didn't notice until somebody I never noticed that somebody pointed out to me. The reason the Dursleys in the Harry Potter books are awful people is because they live with Harry. Because every time they talk about the Dursleys before Harry, every time anybody talks about the Dursleys before Harry was there, they're wonderful, nice, pe loving people. They always talk about them, like before Harry showed up, oh, they used to be so happy, so nice, so carefree. And in the books, they're nothing but miserable. They're awful human beings the entire series. What happens when you live within a horcrux for an extended amount of time? You become more and more mean and bitter. Harry's a horcrux. They lived with him for 11 years. That's why they're horrible people. Oh, wow. I never thought of that. <laughs> that's pretty amazing. Yeah. So, and I think that's where we'll stop.